Six months ago, we posted a video on the Drive Tribe channel about a long lost British V10 sports car called the Connaught Type D. Now that video gained so much traction that my DMs were inundated with people saying that we had to rediscover that car. And after some serious detective work, I found it. We are at the HQ of Bevan Davidson International, an engineering company that makes a whole host of experimental vehicles, from three-wheelers to supercars to ambulances. And it just so happens that they now own the Connaught name and have our car. And here it is, the Connaught Type D. It's been hidden from all eyes since 2004, but we've found it. First impressions, it's a lot smaller than I thought. The press pictures, I guess, kind of got the proportions a bit wrong. It's more like a squatter, wider Mazda MX-5 hardtop. The pictures made it look more sort of TVR size, but no, much smaller than that. Everything in here is predictably very 2004. We've got these funky dials with the Connaught badging. We've got these nice, comfortable sports seats and this mix of leather and, I guess, stainless steel. And then there's this huge transmission tunnel in the middle with the gear shift right beside your knee. And that is because the engine is designed to be quite far back in the car, front mid-engined. And speaking of that engine, this is what makes the Connaught so special. This tiny, narrow angle V10 engine. There's only 22.5 degrees between the banks of cylinders, which means they all fit under one cylinder head, essentially making it a VR10 engine. This is only two liters of displacement. If you think of most V10 engines, they're normally around about five liters. So this thing is minuscule. But before we start it up, let's chat to the man behind this engine, and that car. Tim Bishop used to work for Jaguar Land Rover back in the day, but decided to go it alone and start up his own business, bringing back the Connaught name from the racing team of the 1950s. He was an engine specialist at JLR, hence the talent shown in designing and building this tiny V10. So Tim, you were the man behind this project, but what happened from 2004 until now? Well, basically we ran out of money. Uh, the, I think we were rather too far advanced. The hybrid system was uh, regarded as a joke in a car. To do a seriously lightweight car was something that just passed the major manufacturers by and it also passed the investors by. And then there were various attempts to sell the company and to cut a very long story short, everything that could be salvaged ended up in a store that I built and it, there it sat. And this is the show car. Are there other chassis sitting around in places? Yes, indeed. There's three chassis assembled, another 20, I think, disassembled. I think 20 engines. Okay, and speaking of the engine, let's take a look at this block over here. So first question, why V10? The V10 came from the need to be hybrid because we wanted to have brilliant fuel economy. We wanted to be ahead of everybody else. The only hybrid available was the Prius, which was pretty hideous, and we wanted to do something special. So we needed multiple cylinders because a petrol engine is least efficient when it's idling, so we didn't want it to idle. So the plan with the hybrid system and the double torque from the hybrid system you could come to a standstill in top gear and then when you press the throttle without touching the clutch or anything it would just wind up and drive away from the traffic lights in, in top gear. So you could go from zero to theoretically 140 mile an hour and to do that you need multiple cylinders. How did you come up with this narrow an angle? Is this just pure mathematics that leads to this? Well, I'm not the first. I mean, Lancia were the pioneers of all sorts of narrow angles, and they changed by each engine derivative they had changed by two and a half degrees or five degrees or, or strange things. And uh, Volkswagen, of course, also came up with a narrow angle V6. And it just happens to work out that 22 and a half degrees is a good compromise for any number of cylinders. 
So four cylinders up to 10, actually up to 12, works quite well in 22 and a half degrees. And we've got a running engine that we'll get to later, and it's an incredibly unique car design. What would you like to happen with the Connaught brand going forward? Well, there's a bit of investment in it now, so there's no reason why we shouldn't finish off the, the first batch of cars and bring them into the future because, to be fair, it's 15 years ago since it was all done. So things have moved on and we can simplify the engine management and change this and change that and come up with a whole new range of stuff. Uh, you need to talk to Phil, really, for the <laughs> range of stuff because it's out of my hands now. But I'm very chuffed to actually be running the things and developing the things again. Perfect. Well, Tim, it's been great to speak to you and, yeah, good luck with this project. Thank you. It's, uh, yeah, exciting times. This shoot wouldn't have been possible without the sponsors of today's video, Turtle Wax. They provide a whole load of cleaning and detailing products, whether you just want to give your car an instant detail or whether you've got time of the weekend for a fully fledged wash. Now, I wanted to give the Connaught some fellow British sports car support, so I brought along this lovely Morgan Plus 4. And to make it gleam even on this pretty nasty winter's day, I used Turtle Wax's Wash and Wax Waterless Cleaner. Give the car a spray, give it the once over, and it comes out really nice. I use this on my car when I turn up to events as well, just in case people recognize the Drive Tribe Monday OST. This stuff is great for a quick clean, but if you've got time of the weekend and you want to give your car some real TLC, their Hybrid Solutions products are absolutely perfect for it. So if you would like some of this for your car and to also check out the other products that Turtle Wax provides, there's a link in the description below. Now. Let's go start up that engine. Hey Tim, good luck. <laughs> Here we go. How's that? And that's that. Now, when you revved it a bit more there, that was a bit of V10. That sort of note was bang on a 10 cylinder. And it's amazing to come from something this small compared to, say, a five liter from Lamborghini or something. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll rev a lot higher than that, but it's all brand new inside, so I don't wanna, don't wanna rev its pants off yet. Is that exactly how you remember it back in the day? Absolutely, yes. Um, there's a bit of setting up to do, because you can get the idle down to really slow, but, uh, since we sort of rather hurriedly put the top end together. And the reason we had to cut it off early is because there's no cooling system. There's no coolant on this stand, yeah. no. And also I would want to look at, it, look at the calibration on the computer, but since the computer isn't working because it's been so long since it's run, the computer's now dead and gone. So okay. we've got to kick that all off again. Well, we need more V10s in the world, so I we wish do. you all the luck in the world. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. What a moment it was to hear that engine starting up and hear those morsels of V10 sounds coming from it. And it looks like Connaught has got the investment it now needs to be what it was always meant to be. This car, that engine should make for an awesome combination. And don't you worry, the dynamic debut of this thing will be on our YouTube channel. There is one more thing that I want to show you guys in future that this company is making. It is just through this door and it will be in a future video. It is like nothing I have ever seen before. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.